sponsored by the Institute of Museum and Library Services. Hi, and welcome to the 2021 National Book Festival. My name is Sean Bazarin, and I'm an eighth grade student at Kalinga Middle School in Kalinga, California. Hello, I am Lexi Montoya, and I'm also an eighth grader at Kalinga Middle School. Sean and I both serve as student ambassadors in the spring 2021 Grab the Mic Forward case with the Library of Congress National Ambassador for Young People's Literature, Jason Reynolds. Today, Sean and I are both interviewing Trung Lee Nguyen, about his new book, The Magic Fist. Trung, would you be able to tell us a little bit about the book? Sure, yes. Uh, the Magic Fish is my debut graphic novel. It's the first thing I've ever written, and I'm very proud of it. It's a story about a Vietnamese-American family, and it centers on a young boy in middle school his, whose name is Thien, and his mother's name is Helen. And they are both going on personal journeys, and they try to connect to each other and cross language barriers and cultural barriers by checking out books from the library and reading them together. And so by sitting down and reading stories, they kind of hope to be able to impart uh, important things in their lives to each other uh, for all of the instances where they don't have the common vocabulary to do that elegantly. Thank you for the summary of the book. Now, to start the interview, my first question is, what inspired your book, The Magic Fish? The Magic Fish is inspired by all of the old fairy tales that I used to check out from the library. I loved spending time in the library as a kid, and I would just spend hours and hours um, on weekends when I could go. And my favorite books were always the fairy tales because they were just so lushly illustrated. Um, and I was really fascinated with the process of making books, about making illustrated uh, pictures and narratives that kind of uh, go back and forth between text and images. Um, I really enjoyed kind of turn of the century, uh, golden age of illustration era books. Uh, so I read a lot of books that were illustrated by Edmund Dulock and Arthur Rackham. And uh, more contemporaneously, I really enjoyed uh, Tommy DePaula's books and uh, Trina Schart Hyman, Hyman's books. And uh, uh, gosh, who else? I had so many favorite artists and I would look for um, books based on the illustrators. And so I had a lot of librarians helping me figure out how to search for books um, based on the people who worked on them who weren't necessarily always the writer. And so The Magic Fish being a long comic book is a largely inspired by uh, by telling stories where I could find creators who didn't always work words first. My question for you, Chung, is I have been able to read your biography and I have noticed while reading The Magic Fish that Tian carries many of your characteristics from what I've heard. If I may ask, how closely do you believe the character of Tian resembles you and your own experiences? Uh, Tian, his experience... Uh sort of hues pretty closely to mine. There are a lot of human moments in the story where they're drawn from events that have happened at different points in my life. So he is sort of like a remixed version of me in some ways, um, but I think he's a little bit more even keeled. Uh, so he has a much easier time um, finding his own sense of direction. And so uh, I think the parts of him that are based on me um, were kind of put in there for a little bit of emotional heft and texture, but most of his experiences and his friendships are um, all entirely fictionalized, which I really enjoyed because, um, because autobiography is really difficult and memory is imperfect. And so I wanted the freedom to be able to make a character who reminded me of myself, um, but who went through slightly different things. And as a follow-up question, how did you decide the particular characteristics of the other characters in the book? Uh, the characteristics of the other characters are somewhat based on um, friendships that I've had, but also largely they're reflective of some fairy tale archetypes that I always found to be um, really endearing. Um, so the character of Julian is kind of based on a lot of uh, like kind of the hero characters in fairy stories where he's just sort of like a generally good person. Um, and the Claire character, the best friend character, is based on a lot of kind of like fairy godmother figures. She has a very 
um, particular perspective in that she wants to make sure that her friends experience the fullness of all of the joys of being in school. And so she's cognizant of the fact that she occupies a slightly different world than Tian, and she wants to make sure that he gets to, you know, take part in everything. She wants him to feel really included. Um, and so a lot of the characters kind of have those, um, like the school teacher is also sort of based on um, like some of the ruler characters. She's the evil stepmother or she's the evil queen character. And so they kind of occupy those positions that I think are somewhat analogous to a lot of the fairy tales that I grew up with. I have read your book, The Magic Fish, and personally, I am a fan of it. Um, I like how it's Thank the you. comic style. It has kind of like a manga essence to it, even though it is supposed to be a comic. But I know you have illustrated so many other books. So to that extent, my next question is, what is your favorite or least favorite book that you have worked on with other authors? Ooh, my favorite that I've worked on with other authors. Um, there are two authors that I love to work with. Um, one of them is Marguerite Bennett and one of them is Alex DeCampi. Um, so they've both written fairy tales kind of somewhat in the romance genre for me to draw. And so they're both really brilliant writers who have a really strong sense of direction. And so they know when I'll be appropriate for a story. And so they'll, they'll write a story and they're like, oh, I bet Trung would be really good for this. I think his artistic voice might lend a lot to this story. And they'd be able to sort of um, craft a narrative that is really ideally suited to my voice. And so um, I love working with those two. So I'm sort of cheating. I'm picking those two. And they're both, we both did um, romance projects with them. One of them was Twisted Romance and one of them was Fresh Romance. And that was... I think like the most fun and the smoothest experience I've had working with other folks on uh, comic book storytelling. So to start off, I have must say that I deeply appreciate the matter of how you wrote The Magic Fish. I find it, it is a great way to, enter, to keep the, the reader entertained and not bored out as it composes of, of a good message. Also, it entertains them by being in a comic-like style. That is one thing that many authors our age would look forward to reading for because it, it as well as it is a comic it also teaches a good lesson it also has a good story towards it so my question towards that is what do you consider to be the most challenging obstacle upon writing the book and how do you manage to overcome it um well uh like all things i think it just takes a lot of practice i'm someone who's really comfortable drawing things but um the magic fish was the very first fictional story I've ever written. The only things that I've ever written before The Magic Fish were like essays for school. Um, so it was my very first crack at crafting a narrative and making sure that everything made sense. And so in a lot of ways, I had to learn how to make a really long form comic book on the job. Um, and it was kind of a scary experience sometimes because I wasn't sure if I was doing things correctly. Um, but when you're a writer, when you're a creator, you oftentimes work with a team, you work with editors, you work with people who provide a guiding hand. So if you have questions, if you have things you need clarifying, you can always go to one of those folks. Um, and I had two really brilliant editors work with me on The Magic Fish, um, Gina and Whitney, and they both... Um, answered all of my questions very patiently and they recognized that I was kind of a new author and I was new to the format and I was new to kind of figuring out how to tell a story with this kind of complicated arc and uh, they they suggested a lot of really brilliant things to make the story make a lot of sense and so a lot of the feedback that they provided were geared towards does this make sense narratively and uh, what is the like the emotional core of this part of the story and so when they kind of ask me some of those guiding questions I, uh, I have an opportunity to take a look at the work that I'm producing and adjust things and make sure that things are fine-tuned correctly. So it was a really kind of lovely experience where all of the things that I found to be really challenging, the writing part was especially challenging for me, um, but I had a lot of support. And I think that uh, learning how to do that has really helped me feel more comfortable with doing more projects like this. And so it was a really great first experience. It wasn't this huge, like horrible, daunting thing. It was just this very exciting new endeavor for me. And so I got to you know, be a little bit apprehensive, have a little bit of anxiety about learning new things, but I, I really got to figure myself out and learn how to learn. Um, and uh, I, I had a great time making it despite all of the new challenges that I was facing. I think I wasn't really, I couldn't psych myself out because I didn't know what was coming. I just learned things as I needed to do them. 
And then my question kind of falls up into Sean. Um, this is your first book you have ever written, and you have worked with many other authors, and um, you've probably gotten some great advice from them. So the question is, what is the best advice someone has given you as an author? Uh, the best advice that someone has given me as an author is, uh, I think that there's no one right way to do things. Um, I, I asked a lot of different uh, kind of writer colleagues about how their process looks like, what their process looks like and how they like to go about doing things because I'm someone who really likes rules. I like following a syllabus. I like knowing exactly what I need to learn. But when you're making a project that is kind of like a work of fiction, the parameters and the limitations that you have are all kind of made up. They're sort of arbitrary. Um, and that is really challenging because you don't have a sense for what your limits are some of the time. And you, you kind of, um, you know, you can break your own rules. And sometimes that lends itself to a storytelling process that isn't always very tight. Um, and so when I asked for, you know, script samples or um, samples of um, like page thumbnails, things that I'd never known how to do before from other people, I noticed that people did things their own way. They all did things in a slightly different way to their comfort. But I was told that the important thing is to make sure that my work is legible and communicable because sometimes the point of making a really rough work is to make sure that the other person that you're working with, the person on the other end, knows exactly what direction you're going in. So just making sure that your communication is really clear is sort of the central conceit of working with other people. The format doesn't matter quite as much as I thought that it did. Because I think I used to get really precious about making sure that I did things the right way. And once I was kind of freed of thinking that the format has to be exactly just right, um, I became more effective at communicating with people um, my intentions for my story. So that was, that was a really nice piece of advice for me. Well, Chung, um, many authors happen to receive feedback on behalf of their work, some which may be positive and negative. How would you consider yourself to respond to these reviews and critiques as they play a major impact upon writing books? Sure. Um, I'm not someone who is super comfortable reading reviews. Um, there are a lot of different kinds of feedback um, that I get as an author. And reviews, I think, are after the book is already done, so I can't change things. Um, and so I consider a person's review of the book to be personal. That stuff is none of my business. So if they write a good review, that's really great. That's very nice for me, um, and they might recommend the book to other people. But if they write a negative review of my work, that's not any of my business. And they didn't make it my business. They didn't complain to me about my book. And so I think that it's very kind of them to put their feedback elsewhere on, you know, out in the world, on the internet, um, because that your relationship with a piece of work is really personal. And I think it can be personal away from the purview of the author as well. And so I don't read reviews. But the critical feedback that I really value comes from my collaborators and comes from my editors. Um, and I don't consider feedback to be positive or negative. I consider feedback to be either leave it alone or make adjustments. And making adjustments is always a process of fine tuning. It's not really like, oh, like I don't like this. They're usually asking me, well, what is your intention? What is your goal? And how can we help you meet that goal a little bit better? And so when I get critical feedback from my collaborators, it's usually not this, it's not harrowing for me. I don't have bad feelings about it because I know that the goal is to make my work the best that it can be. And it's really helpful to hear um, what works and what doesn't. And most of the notes that I get about adjustments are honestly quite minor. Um, and most of the kind of larger adjustments I need to make get uh, taken care of at the script stage. And so by the time I'm drawing a comic, usually all of the big scary stuff has been taken care of already. And the only adjustments that I need to make are kind of small visual ones or making sure that things are consistent from page to page. So my relationship with critical feedback is largely pretty positive. Well, it's great to hear that people enjoy your book as much as we do. Um, but I do want to step aside from your book for a little bit. And to that extent, my next question would be, what is your favorite book that you have read? And how has that book opened a new world to you? This is a tough question for me because I've read a lot of books that have had a pretty enormous impact on me. I think... 
I tend to like to break it down into different genres, but I don't think that we have time to go through all of my favorite books and all of my favorite genres. I think um, one of the books that I always come back to um, is uh, Lighthouse Keeping by Jeanette Winterson. It's a really kind of strange uh, narrative, but Jeanette Winterson's writing is so beautiful and has so much texture. It's almost like the writing is aromatic. And since I'm someone who tells stories with images, I have a different set of storytelling priorities. So I don't make work the way that she does. And I think I really like that. I tend to like to read work by people who make things um, from a space and from a set of priorities that are totally different than mine, because it really helps me to both expand my horizons and also maintain a relationship with my own work where I don't feel like I need to um, telegraph or make work that runs parallel to or uh, imitates um, the the creators that I admire. And so I always, I like to recommend Jeanette Winterson's books um, because her prose is so beautiful. Uh, some of the content in the book tends to, like there, she wrote a book called um, The Daylight Gate that is about the Pendle Witch Trials and it's very violent and visceral. So um, if that's stuff that readers aren't super ready for, it's not one that I heartily recommend, but um, Lighthouse Keeping is my favorite because it's very meditative and the narrative format is a little bit confusing, but it's not entirely the point and I love that about her writing and then the last question that we have for you today in this interview is how do you want your book the magic fish to open a new world to others I think um one of the central themes in the magic fish for me as a creator and I think that there's no wrong way to read the book your interpretation of my book is your interpretation of the book um and that's never going to be incorrect because your experience is your own and it's none of my business for the most part um but I think one of the things that I really wanted to center while I was writing it is um that a lot of the experience that Tune went through as a kid I could really relate to but I didn't really write the book necessarily from his perspective alone. The deuteragonist is his mother and she has her own kind of emotional arc. And since I wrote the book in my adulthood, I did a lot of reflection about, you know, what sorts of challenges parents have to contend with in terms of navigating spaces that their children go through that they don't necessarily have the experience with. Um, and so the takeaway that I hope that folks um, have with the magic fish is that there are ways to um, be radically empathetic and there are opportunities in your life to, um, to try your very best to understand that people are at where they're at and nobody has a perfect understanding of how to navigate everything. And so identifying when people are trying their best with the limited resources that they have can really help you be a more compassionate and empathetic person. Um, yeah, I hope I hope people get that out of it. Well, Chung, thank you very much for taking the time to talk with us today. And to all the audience, thank you all for joining us here at the 2021 National Book Festival. Thank you.